Welcome to the Proctor Gallagher Matrix. I appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule this evening to be with us. My name is Gina Hayden and I am VP of Operations and Events for the Proctor Gallagher Institute. I am also the director of the Matrix program. The Matrix program is one of our company's premier programs. To me, anytime you have an opportunity to be in Bob's presence for a full four to six days in an intimate setting, it is just a very, very special thing to be a part of. Um, we have seen some amazing results come out of this particular program. I mean, re results that um, really are, I, I can't even begin to explain. One fellow went from his business really going down the tubes, and today he owns several companies. He just bought a new million dollar property. I mean, his his life just keeps getting better and better. But Bob will talk a little bit about that uh, during the program. You know, I've had the opportunity to work with Bob for the past 28 years. Uh, it will be 28 years actually on July 3rd. It will be our anniversary. And whether we're in Australia or Malaysia, Europe, China, everybody says the same thing, that he's absolutely the best. Now, why do they say that? Because when you're in Bob's presence, I mean, when you're in one of his programs, he talks about you. He talks about your unlimited potential and how you have the ability to do anything you want. And he gets you to open up your mind and to really think and to dream big about what you do really want. Um, we've seen it time and time again. People come with a big dream and they leave and they execute it. And that's not uncommon for this program. In fact, it's becoming commonplace. Um, you know, uh, Doug uh, Weed, who is, um, he was the uh, special assistant to the president of the Bush administration some years ago, um, gave a really great uh, quote about Bob, and I'm just going to read it for you. He said, Zig Ziglar may be the master motivator, Mark Victor Hansen of Chicken Soup for the Soul, the master storyteller. Anthony Robbins may be the guru of personal development, but Bob Proctor is the master thinker. When it comes to systematizing life, no one else can touch him. He is simply the best. Bob Proctor collects thoughts like Imelda Marcos used to collect shoes. He strings them together in exquisite arrays, one thought leading logically to the next until a whole method has been constructed. That is Bob. He has the unique ability to make the difficult seem simple. And without any further delay, Bob Proctor. Thank you, Dana. Well, I want to welcome everybody to Matrix. And I'm going to tell you, it's been a pleasure for me to work with Gina for the last 28 years. She is she's a marvel, I'm telling you. She just does so many wonderful things for us. Matrix is a special program. We spend a week together, six days. And Matrix came about, I was on a plane, and I was just, I just reliving the wonderful things that have happened in my life over the past 50 years. And I get thinking, you know, we should be able to really make something happen. You know, I do one-day seminars, two-day seminars. And I thought, if we had as much time as we wanted, how much time? And so I got thinking about it. I thought, if we could spend a week together, then I thought of some of the people that we have working with us. I really believe the secret to building a great organization is to have a great team. No one did ever did anything of any consequence on their own. You need a team. And we have one of the most magnificent teams you'll ever find. Now that is within the company, the people that work directly in the company. But then we have an outside team that we would look at as suppliers, I suppose. But they work with us, work with us very closely, and they help us reach our goals, and we set and achieve some phenomenal goals. I sat in a hotel, or pardon me, in a den in my home on Maplewood Lane in Glenville, Illinois, Glenview, Illinois, in 1973. I had been in the business since 1968 with the Nightingale Corporation in Chicago, and I decided, I sat there and I thought, I'm going to take off and really build something. I had a pen and a pad, and that's it. And I got my imagination working, and I decided I was going to build a company that operated all over the world. And that's exactly what we have today. We operate in over 100 countries. 
the matrix is really the essence of what we've done. I brought it all together and I thought if we brought our whole team in and then brought some of our key suppliers in and exposed them to a group of people, what would happen? And then I got thinking, what would we call this if we did it? So I decided that we would break it into various parts and we were going to spend six days. And this group is going to come together, they're going to perform magic. And that's really where it all started. And we have done this now for, I think, four or five years, and some absolutely phenomenal things has happened as a result of it. Now, you take a look. The matrix is, I think, explained very well here. It's a resourceful environment where people from around the world collaborate, mastermind, and explore opportunities while developing financial independence by establishing multiple sources of income. You see, this isn't um, just for salespeople, it's not just for managers, it's not just for men, not just for women. This is for people who really want to make something happen. And they're ready to go to the edge and let go. And we bring them all together. And we create uh, a cooperative operation. There's no competition, there's just cooperation. Now to explain this properly, you have to be there. I have put a few slides together. I've had uh, one of our ladies, uh, Rebecca Hansen, put some slides together for me. And attempting to explain matrix, but I know we're going to fall far short because it's an experience. It's something you've got to get into. And when people get into it, they start to feel it. Now, uh, one of our people come up with a brilliant idea here just a couple hours ago. We had a a number of testimonial letters from people that have just gone through Matrix, people that wrote us a letter, wanted to tell us what they thought of it. And so we got the idea, we're going to send you all a letter. We're going to send you these letters and let you read, and uh, you'll read who they were and, and uh, what, what happened. Because it it's just an absolutely incredible experience. You see breakthroughs happening that you would normally see. And that is because everybody works together to help everybody else. Now we have one objective and this is the objective. We want everyone to turn their annual income into a monthly income. I did that way back, well I did that many times over, way back in 1961. And I became so fascinated with what I did that I've never stopped thinking about it. And I got thinking, gosh, if I could do this, anyone could do it. Now in case you have to drop off early, if some emergency may come up, uh, one may come up here. My power is going off, going off here at home um, every 20 minutes or so. There's a quite a storm going on, but I want you to write this um, website down: ProctorGallagherInstitute.com forward slash ideas, and jot that down so that if you have to drop off the line, um, you can go there and um, you can get some more information and then if there's somebody you want to talk to, we will have someone uh, sit and answer any questions you might have. So just drop that down, ProctorGallagherInstitute.com forward slash ideas. Now, the matrix, we have people literally come from all over the world. They come from Asia, they come from Australia, from South America, from all over Europe, from all over North America. There's hardly uh, a continent that you won't find people from, from Africa. They come from all over. And the people, uh, they all have one thing in common. They want to make something happen in their life. I have been making something happen in my life for the last 54 years. And I've had an absolutely phenomenal life. If I was to leave tonight, I have no regrets. I have just had an absolutely incredible trip. But it didn't happen by accident. It happened because I made decisions. And I keep making decisions. And I keep wanting it to happen. Now, here is uh, really what you have to look at. There's two things that you must know if you want to create wealth. And I think everybody should create wealth because it gives you freedom. I often say you'd be amazed at how much free time you have when you never have to think about money. You have to know two things. You have to know where you are 
and you have to know where you're going, and then you've got to get going. Now that is so simple and so obvious, you have to ask why are so many people stuck? Because the vast majority of the population is stuck. They are really stuck. They're wrestling and they're trying and they're, they're working hard and you get all kinds of students graduating from school around this time of year. They, they're up to their ears in depth for the education that they think they got and they can't even find work. And that's not a good situation. Maybe there's something wrong with what we call our education. Maybe we should approach it a little different. So you think, well, if it's so simple, why is it that 90-some percent of the population are stuck? They're really not financially independent. They're not living the way they really want to live. Now, the obvious answer is, these people don't have goals. But that's not true, because some of them do have goals. Some of them even have their goals in writing. I don't think that's where the problem is. I think the sharp ones know you've got to have a goal, but they set goals and it doesn't happen. And after a while, you get a little discouraged. No, I think the problem is right here. It's where you are. You see, I'm not talking about where you are geographically. I'm talking where you are from a psychological perspective. You see, most people are stuck with paradigms. A paradigm is nothing but a multitude of habits that have been fixed in our subconscious mind. We are literally programmed from infancy. I believe we're programmed from the moment of conception. You'll find this DNA uh, programming in us. Uh, of the belief systems that have gone back a few generations are programmed right into our genes. And then after birth, we're programmed environmentally. And we uh, we have all kinds of crazy ideas that uh, are programmed into our mind. And we believe them because that's what we're taught. We speak the language we speak, not because we chose to speak the language. That's the language we were born into. The people around us spoke that language. We have a, um, a salesperson and um, a rush, and he and, uh, and his wife have two little children. The one little boy, I think he's around three, he speaks Spanish. He speaks English and he speaks Farsi. He speaks the three of them. And Arash says, you know, it's a strange thing if I speak to him in Spanish, he answers me in Spanish. Or if we speak to him in English, he speaks. He answers us. He, and he's able to distinguish us. He's only three years old. But you know, you can teach children to read before they can talk. Now, most people say, well, you can't do that. Well, they probably wouldn't. But the truth is, you can. And you see, this is what we work on. We are excellent at showing people how to change their paradigm. So the question most people are asking themselves, can I change my paradigm? And the answer to that is an emphatic yes. Yes, you can. See, that's what I did. I did it a number of years ago. And I found out without question, when you change your paradigm, you become connected to an entirely different world. You know there's a different world there. You know there's a different world. There's a different world that you're around that you see. You see it every day. You see them driving the beautiful cars and going in the beautiful homes and going on great trips in the front of the cars or private planes. I mean, you see this. This is happening. We know it's there. And we know that some of the people that have this are not overly bright. Now, some of them are absolutely brilliant. But what is it? It's the paradigm. It's how we're programmed. You see, when you change your paradigm, you be connected to an entirely different world. Matrix focuses on changing paradigms. And when you change your paradigm, I'm going to tell you something, you have hope. See, there's no wondering if you're going to make it anymore. You know you're going to make it. And the beautiful thing about hope, when you have hope, you know what comes with it? Options. Isn't that cool? Options. You're not stuck. You don't have to do anything. You realize now that you choose everything. You can choose your income. That's right. I talked about changing your annual income to a monthly income. I can take in all kinds of people. I've shown how to do that. I did that many, many years ago. I really didn't know what I was doing, but I did it. You have options. You can live the way you want. You can live where you want. God gave us the ability to make choices. Now, unfortunately, most people don't make them. But I'm going to tell you, you get in matrix, you'll make them. We have one of the most phenomenal systems 
for opening people up and getting them to dream and getting them then to put their dream on paper and then everybody works at helping you figure out a plan on how to execute that dream. That's right. You know, Napoleon Hill talked about the big money. Well, we're going to show you, we're going to introduce you to the big money. That's right. See, big money is a relative term. A million dollars to one person is a lot of money. To another, it's really not very much. In fact, they relegate million dollars decisions to someone that is in a lower rank than themselves. There's big money out there, and everybody can have it. There is no limit. You see, money's in the air. You know, the Maharashi one time, there's a story about he was going to take the Transcendental Meditation to the world, and it was going to cost a lot of money, and one of his close advisors asked him, where's the money going to come from? He said, wherever it is right now. Do you know when you make a decision that you're going to get something? You make a decision. You don't know how you're going to afford it, but you are definitely going to get it. You always find the money. Oh, that's right. I want you to take a look around your home. There's all kinds of things in your home you don't need. You know where you got them? You wanted them. When you make up your mind you're going to get what you want, everything starts to change. Napoleon Hill put it very well. He said, when riches begin to come, they come so quickly in such great abundance that one wonders where they've been hiding through all those lean years. Well, I'm a pretty strong student of Napoleon Hill's. I've been studying his work and the work of Andrew Carnegie for 54 years. In fact, I recently taught, I literally taught the book Think and Grow Rich to a number of people from various parts of the world. It was a phenomenal program. You see, it was Think and Grow Rich that changed my life. I'm going to tell you how it started. A man sat down with me and he put an R on a sheet of paper. Then he put three letters down beside it. He said, Bob, let that re represent happiness, health, and wealth. And then he asked me if I thought he was a happy guy. I said, yeah, he seemed very happy to me. I didn't know him well, but he was, he was a very happy-looking guy. He said, have you ever seen me when I was sick? I had to admit I hadn't. He said, have you ever seen me when I was broke? I said, no, I don't think I ever had this guy. Always had a roll of money on him. Every now and then he'd take it out and he said, you know something, Bob, this stuff can't talk, but it can hear. And if you call it, it'll come. Well, I was prepared to call. You see, he said, you're one of the most miserable people I've ever met. And he said, you're always sick. Nothing terminal, but you're always sick. And he said, you're always broke. Now, he was actually being kind. I was earning $4,000 a year. This was in 1961. But I owed $6,000. If I had taken every cent I earned for an entire 18-month period and just paid debts, I would have just broken even. And I would have had nothing to live on. See, that was a hopeless situation. But he said, you don't have to live that way. And he said, I have something for you. And he gave me this book. Now he said, Bob, this man spent his entire life studying 500 of the most successful people in the world at that time. And he said, I think it would be a very prudent move on your part if you spent the rest of your life attempting to understand and apply what's in that book. Well, you know, at that time, I was intimidated by the book. I had never read a book. I was 26. I had never gone to school. I went to high school for two months. I never had a half-decent job. I never did. I had jobs. I had two jobs that lasted for an hour. I couldn't hold a job. I was a bit of a useless character. Now, I think I was a nice enough person. I just didn't amount to anything. And that was because I never made a decision to. And he said, Bob, if you do exactly what I tell you, I'm going to show you how to get anything you want. Well, I didn't believe that. But I believed he believed it. And so I said, I'll do it. Now, I don't know why I said that. I was 26. I had never done what someone told me. I'd been in and out of the Navy. I never did what they told me there, and that got me in trouble. But I decided I would do it. You know, one year later, I was earning $175,000 in a year. Yeah. You say, what were you doing? I was cleaning floors. You see, I did what the book said. I set a goal. I set a goal of having $25,000 by New Year's Day of 1970. I wrote that goal in 1960. I really didn't believe it would happen. I gave myself a decade to do it. He said, just do what I tell you. So I did exactly what he said. 
A year later, that's where I was. And you know something? I then took it over a million. You say, how'd you do that? I ended up cleaning floors in Toronto, Montreal, Boston, Cleveland, Atlanta, London, England. I had all kinds of people cleaning floors. I had learned the secret of earning money, of becoming wealthy. But I really didn't understand what I was doing. I was what you call an unconscious competent. Now, I'm going to give you something, and I'm going to ask you to remember this. I want you to remember it. I want you to take one of the most successful people you know and ask them, how did you become this successful? And they'll look at you and they'll say, well, I don't know. Most of the people think that person's really smart. They may not be that smart. They may be very smart, but they might not be. Ask them. Do you know that 9 out of 10 highly successful people cannot articulate on why they are? If they knew why, they would give it to their kids. And a lot of the kids never get what the parents got. If corporations knew why their stars were stars, they would can it and give it to everybody. They don't know. And I didn't know. Here I was earning over a million dollars a year, and I had absolutely no idea what I was doing. Well, I would tell you I was cleaning floors, but a lot of people were cleaning floors. They weren't doing what I was doing. I would say, well, I've, I've read Think and Go Rich. In fact, I've never stopped reading it. And a lot of people read that book. They weren't doing what I was doing. And I started to think about it. And I've been raised to believe if you're going to earn a lot of money, you've got to be really smart. Well, I knew I wasn't very smart, but I was earning a lot of money. And then I was raised to believe if you're going to do well in business, you've got to have a good formal education. I didn't have any. I, didn't, I wasn't only doing well, I owned the business. And so I thought, what's going on? Then I started to think, well, if I believed you had to be smart to be rich, I knew I wasn't very smart, I was rich. I wonder how many things I believe that aren't true. And so I started to study. And I made up my mind I was going to find out what the heck happened. I did not believe that there was some emotional or capricious God on a cloud that said, let's make it Bob's turn. I didn't think I was lucky. In fact, I read where Voltaire said, luck is, is a word we invented to express the known effects of unknown causes. So I made up my mind I was going to find out. It took me nine and a half years. The matrix is the essence of what I learned in that nine and a half years. After I learned it, I went and I got a contract with the Prudential of America. Raised their sales by over hundreds of millions of dollars. You say, Proctor, you're exaggerating. No, I'm not. It's on record. I worked all over America with Prudential. I had a hard time getting out of there because everywhere I went, the sales skyrocketed. I was showing people why they were stuck, and I was showing them how to change it. I worked for all of Metropolitan Life, Great Eastern, over in Asia. I've traveled all over the world. We work in a hundred different countries today. So I started to study this book. Here's something I found. I'm going to show you something I found in the book. I want you to look at this really carefully. This is pretty interesting. I want you to look at that paragraph. That's my book. That's the book that I study. Here's what he said. There's a difference between wishing for a thing and being ready to receive it. No one is ready for a thing until they believe that they can acquire it. The state of mind must be belief and not mere hope or wish. Now he said, open mindedness is essential to belief. Closed minds will not inspire faith, courage, or belief. See, most people are hoping and wishing it happens. God, I hope this works out for me. But they don't really believe it's going to happen. I'm talking about at a core level, right in the deep recesses of their mind. And if they don't believe it, they're not ready for it. You've got to believe it. Well, I'm going to tell you. We're going to show you how to alter your belief system. That's right. See, your belief system is founded on your evaluation of something. And frequently when you reevaluate a situation, your belief about that situation will change. Well, we're going to show you how to reevaluate you. Now think of this for a moment. No more effort is required in order to aim high in life to demand abundance and prosperity than is required to accept misery and poverty. It doesn't take any more effort to turn your annual income into a monthly income than it does to settle for where it's at. You just reduce it to the ridiculous, break it into small parts. We'll show you how to do that. Now you may say, well, I don't know enough. Well, that's what I thought. And this is when I come across in this part of the book. He's talking about specialized knowledge. And right here it tells you. 
before you can be sure of your ability to transmute desire into its monetary equivalent, you're going to require specialized knowledge. Well, I didn't have any. I told you I never went to school. I never had a half-decent job. But then he covers it down here. It's just a little further down on the same page. He said, the accumulation of great fortunes calls for power. And power is acquired through highly organized and intelligently directed specialized knowledge. But, that knowledge does not have necessarily have to be in the possession of the person who accumulates the fortune. Look at this. You can obtain the specialized knowledge you require from the matrix experts, saving yourself for years of time-consuming study. Now, what do we mean the matrix experts? Well, we're all experts at what we do. I'm very good at what I do. Now, I work in a pretty narrow niche. I'm not good at a lot of other things, but I'm very good at what I do. I don't even want to do anything else. And that's where our company runs. We've got people that are very good at various things. They do a phenomenal job at what they do. They're available. They're going to help you. But then we bring outside people in that work with us. They're the experts. And they make a presentation, 10, 15 minutes, of how they help us. Then if you want to make an appointment to sit down with them, you can make an appointment to sit down. We do not pay them to come in, and they won't pay us to come in. And if you want to get them to help you with your idea, you can go ahead. And I'm going to tell you, you will get blown away with some of the people we work with. Now, mind you, we've been at this a long time, so we know a lot of good people. And that's the way it works. It's so beautiful. We're going to help you understand what Buckminster Fuller said. He said, you never change things by fighting the existing reality. To change something, you build a new model that makes the existing model obsolete. Well, that's what you do there. You do it with our help. You do it with the help of all the other participants. You do it with the help of the experts. We help you build a model. If you've got an idea, we'll show you how to take it to market. That's right. And if you haven't got an idea, I guarantee you, within hours of being there, you will have an idea, because we're going to loose you up and get the ideas flowing through you. There's no one on the earth that's more creative than you. See, creativity is within us. We never get it developed. You'll hear people say, well, I'm not creative. Everyone is creative. Think about it. I want you to think. Six days, six days in this environment, your life is going to change. But here's something you have to understand. Look at your life the way it is. And I'm going to tell you, all it needs is one good idea. Just one good idea. Everything will happen to change your life. You have to change your paradigm. That's the only way. If you want to change your finances, you've got to change your paradigm. I want you to think of this for a moment. Your spiritual DNA is perfect. It requires no modification, no improvement. There's only two references to go to, science and theology. They both teach us all knowledge is omnipresent, even the present in all places at the same time. They tell us all the power there ever was or ever will be. You don't get energy, you release energy. Desire is a triggering mechanism to release it. All the power there ever was or ever will be is omnipresent. That's right. Evenly present in all places at the same time. That's the real you. Are you truly who you pretend to be? See, most of us are walking around with the wrong idea about who we are. As we alter our image of ourselves, everything in the world changes. You see, the truth is, you and I are spiritual beings. And we live in a physical body. Most people think they're physical beings, and maybe they have a spiritual experience now and then. No, no, no. You are a spiritual being. Spirit's all-knowing, all-powerful, omnipresent. There's genius locked up within you. It's all within, and it's expressed with and through you. You've been developed with an intellect. You have an intellect. You're the only creature on the planet, so far as we know, that has. See, all the other little creatures on the planet, they blend into their environment. They're completely at home in their environment. You and I are the only creature on the planet, so far as we know, that's totally disoriented in their environment. And that is because we were given the higher faculties to create our own environment. It's just that most people don't. They never learn how to develop it. We're never taught about our higher faculties. And it's these higher faculties that dictate the emotional state we're in. It'll dictate the vibration we're in. You saw in the secret we talked about attraction. 
Well, I'm going to tell you, attraction by itself is Zippo. Attraction is a secondary law. The primary law is vibration. Hold your hand in front of you. It looks solid, doesn't it? Look at it through a microscope. You can see nothing but a massive energy and a high speed of vibration. Do you know that your body is casting off millions of cells every second, and it's recreating millions of cells, new cells? We can recreate ourselves the way we want when we learn how to utilize ourselves. Think. You're a spiritual being. You have an intellect. And you live in a physical body. You see, you can activate that intellect of yours and you can tap in to the spiritual side of your personality. That's where thoughts are. Thoughts are on the present. And you can pull the thoughts together and you can build any idea you want. It's a beautiful concept, isn't it? And the idea that you hold in your mind by the law of your being must move into form. That's what Andrew Carnegie taught Napoleon Hill. He said, any idea that's held in the mind, that's emphasized, that's either feared or revered, will begin at once to clothe itself in the most convenient and appropriate forms available. That's either feared or revered. The great sufferer in the Bible, Job, he says, lo, the thing I fear has come to visit upon me. If you're worried about something, it's on its way. You've put in an order for it, you're going to get it. You better get your mind onto a big idea, a positive idea, and watch that manifest in your life. I guarantee at the end of the matrix, you're going to know exactly how you function. It's a beautiful concept. What's your big idea? What is your big idea? You say, I don't have one. Yes, you do. Yes, you do. Oh, yes, you do. Have you gotten started yet? You want to get started? Do you really want to step out? Do you want to do it different, make it different? Ask yourself, are you feeling stuck? Because you know something, 90 some percent of the population is, and you don't have to. How would your life change? How would your life change from one big idea? Now think about that. How would your life change from one big idea? Think of it. Do you know that most people are extras in their own movie? They watch the movie of their life. They watch what's happening. Let's step out. Let's step outside of ourselves and look at ourselves. We're the only creature on the planet that can do that. Look at the way we're behaving. Look at what we're getting. Is that what I want with this life I've got? What do you really want? You become the director. You know, all you have to do is make the decision. That's it. You don't wonder if you can't afford it. When the decision's made, whatever you need will be attracted to you. Before I close here, I'm going to show you something that is worth its weight in gold. I'm going to show you something about decisions. Let these lines represent levels of vibration. Levels of vibration are more commonly referred to as frequencies. You and I think on frequencies. Let these puppy little clouds represent the thoughts that you have been thinking and they turn into the results that you're getting. So this is where we are and you say, but that's where I really want to go. I want to go there. I'm going to do that as soon as I get the money. I'm going to do that as soon as the kids finish school. I'm going to do that as soon as whatever. If you don't make up your mind, you're never going to do that. you got to say, I'm doing that. That's it. And the second you say that, you flip your brain onto the frequency that it has to be on to think the thoughts that you have to think to get the thing you want. Now, if you look back, you've done that. You have done that in your life. You said, I am doing this. I am not selling. I am doing this. And when you made that decision, the way started to be shown. That's right. I think it's written, seek ye first this kingdom of expansion, and all these things will be given to us. What things? Whatever things are necessary for the manifestation of the dream. Well, I'm going to tell you something. Matrix is special. It's six days, and it's phenomenal. If you're seriously interested, I want you to go to ProctorGallagherInstitute.com forward slash ideas. There's a short video there. Watch the video. Then click and leave your information. Let one of our people talk to you. 
Don't pass this up. Now your paradigm will try and talk you out of it. Don't go and ask somebody else what they think you should do. <coughs> They're not going to pay your bills. They're not going to buy the car, build the business. You've got to do this. See, this is where we got to go inside. Go to the fun set of Rigo. Go to the fountain and source. Go inside. Follow what's going on inside. You'll be so glad you did. And you know something? It'll just keep getting better. It will just keep getting better. Your life is a great gift. It really is. And you can make it whatever you want. The conditions or circumstance don't make us. It's the decisions that we make that make us. If you're not happy with the conditions or circumstance, you can change them. That's right. You can take control of your life. That's really what Matrix is about. Matrix is about showing people how to take control over their life and living the way they want to live. It is one of the most phenomenal experiences you'll ever have. It will be the best investment of time and money you've ever spent. And I want you to think of this. You're going to spend the time and you're going to spend the money anyway. What are you going to spend it on? Invest it in your own future. We'll show you how to build a business, how to take your idea to market, how to manifest your idea, how to get the help you need to execute your idea. That's really what we're good at. We've been doing it for a long time, for 46 years. We're not new kids on the block. We've got an excellent reputation all over the world. Go to that site. Leave us your information. We want to talk to you. Get all your questions answered. Jot your questions down. And then, when somebody phones to set up an appointment for you, keep the appointment. Answer the questions. Get the questions answered. I want to thank you very much for coming on this presentation. I want to thank uh, Becca and Mikey for putting you together. And I want to set, thank Gina for the phenomenal job she does as a director of Matrix. You will be so impressed with Gina and her team. It runs like a Swiss watch, and she makes it all happen. This is Bob Proctor, and thank you.